Parr. All right, hey, good evening. My name is Major John Hearn, and I'm the Administrative Officer for the Rear Detachment for the 86th IBCT Mountain. First and foremost, I want to just express my gratitude and thanks for the families that will be joining us here tonight uh, for the soldiers that are deployed for at this point in time. You go to the next slide. We have a few things that we want to cover in this evening's agenda. First, we just want to share some opening remarks from Major General Knight, our uh, Adjutant General, and then we're going to go through some topics from frequently asked questions that we've received so far from families. So hopefully we provide you with the information that you can input questions into the Facebook Live, and we'll do our best to answer them here with the panel of experts that we have before us. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and turn it over to opening remarks from Major General Knight. In this town hall, either in person or virtually. I'm Major General Greg Knight, Vermont's Adjutant General. I'd like to start out by thanking and acknowledging each of you for the support you provide to our members. While they're off answering the nation's call, you remain here, caring for their homes, their children, and sometimes their parents. It's been said many times before, but never enough, that they're able to do their very important work because of your love and support. We'll never forget that. I know I won't. Right now, the 86th Brigade Headquarters and 172nd Cav are wrapping up training exercises and preparing to depart for their ultimate destination in the next few days. While Bravo Battery is also preparing to deploy from Texas. Task Force Mansfield has just arrived in country, while Task Force Avalanche, units deployed to U.S. Africa Command and the 172nd Law Enforcement Detachment, continue with their overseas operations. So tonight, Major John Hearn, Administrative Officer for Task Force Patriot, commander of the 186th Brigade Support Battalion, has a panel of experts here who can answer your questions about care packages, resources, and other logistics like the Red Cross process. Now that your member's been deployed for some time, you may have additional questions about how to receive the support you need. So there'll be time for you to ask your own questions through the Facebook comments. But before I hand it over to him, I'd like to recognize several of our volunteers for their work supporting families through this difficult time. The 2021 Eagle Award goes to the Army Guard volunteer who shows an astounding level of commitment to her unit, community, and to the entire state's soldier and family readiness program. These volunteers spearheaded an effort to spread awareness of the needs of new mothers that not only benefited her company, but all of the Vermont National Guard. She's planned and executed several family days and fundraisers and has been the go-to person on how to implement these types of morale-boosting events. Her volunteers continually step up when she calls to do amazing things for her families. The Eagle Award is presented to Jillian Eman. Army Guard volunteer who has put others' needs before her own. She spends countless hours on the phone, checking in with her families. If the family has an issue and she can resolve it, she does. When the Vermont Teddy Bear Drive was happening, she selflessly volunteered her time and energy to personally deliver the bears to every family that lived in central and northern Vermont. This volunteer is constantly trying to find ways to help her families through the current deployment. The Angel Award is presented to Margaret Brasso. <laughs> the 2021 Footprint Award goes to the Army Guard volunteer who always sacrifices her personal time for the families and the local community. She's made a major impact on her unit as the SFRG leader by assisting those families affected by deployment through mentorship and connection. She makes time for her families and helps them daily. The Footprint Award is presented to Kim Buckley. The 2021 Puzzle Master Award goes to the Army Guard volunteers who been instrumental in supporting the family members in her unit. Due to the Armory's remote location, she's had to use personal ingenuity and community resources developed over the years to ensure that every SFRG event was successful. She will always go out of her way to get one of her families the assistance they need. It was this volunteer that identified the lack of childcare assistance for Vermont National Guard families during deployments. 
It was her persistence on this issue that spurred conversations at the state level on ways to provide this assistance. The Puzzle Master Award is presented to Tammy Schnoop. The 2021 Above and Beyond Award goes to the Army Guard volunteer who has been a steadfast leader of more than one state family readiness group through combined efforts within the 172nd CAF. Her leadership has led to implementation of many best practices and initiatives for SFRGs across the state. Due to her exemplary leadership abilities and personal dedication, this volunteer has been appointed as a state soldier and family readiness group leader. She has time and time again gone above and beyond the normal duties of an SFRG leader to assist others. And the award is presented to Jessica Smith. support of our soldiers and our Vermont National Guard. Special thanks to family programs for all the work that you do in the background to make sure that we stay ready and our soldiers and families are taken care of. I wish you all the best and as always if I may ever be of service don't hesitate to reach out. Take care. So I just want to thank Major General Knight for putting those remarks together and recognizing our volunteers. Um, without you, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. So thank you for all the work uh, that you guys have done in support of our families and in support of our soldiers. So we'll now go into the topic portion um, and cover a few topics from the frequently asked questions that we've received uh, from the Vermont National Guard. So we'll go ahead and start with topic one, which will actually be facilitated by Jesse Smith and Jillian. So if you guys would come up, please, thank you. consistently made it easy for her unit to get care packages out and she's made an example for all of the other units on you know how to follow in her footsteps what to do the do's and the don'ts best practices and she's given us all a bunch of helpful tips and tricks that we can go from there you want to say a Office is the one group 
who has the government contracts to deliver packages to Army post offices. Uh, so one of the benefits with that, uh, because of that contract, you're not going to pay overseas shipping charges. Whatever you're sending to your soldier, no matter which theater they're in, uh, it's going to cost you the domestic rates. Uh, we do know that the post office offers uh, a six box package that is free. So if you request it from the post office uh, for the purpose of military packages. So if you want to go to a different service like UPS or FedEx to pay for their packaging services, that's, van that's fine. Uh, but they will end up falling over to the postal service. So just a heads up, go to the post office. Uh, it is, we're seeing some feedback of different strengths among the post offices of what kind of volume they're doing with these military packages. Know that it is not a normal type of process. Uh, it's, it's not the most common thing that everybody has done. Uh, so have some patience when you're filling out the forms and, and take the time to, to be educated and, and do them correctly when sending them overseas. Uh, so, on the individual side, we're not able to provide uh, monetary assistance in paying for care package to go over to your soldiers, uh, but we do have some efforts to coordinate if there are any larger donations like that that could eventually assist with this. At this time, that is not the case. Uh, on the business side of things, as Jeff Smith alluded to, uh, I believe today was decided more than three drop-off points. White River Junction, uh, Sierra Camp Johnson, and Rutland. So those will be the three armories that we currently have that are going to be receiving uh, large donated items. We have systems in place on the military side to be able to move those goods and, and distribute them appropriately so that all of the units are being supported uh, as equally as we possibly can. If you have further questions at this time, uh, go ahead and pop them into the feed to send that stuff out. And the last thing I want to say was, depending on where your soldier is, they will have a list of items that are approved and, and restricted from being able to send overseas. Uh, for example, to so the units that are in the Middle East, there are certain cultural aspects that play into what you can send over. Um, a big thing is, at least for that group, they can't send liquids. Uh, now that seems maybe a little odd, but the big reason there was those packages, once you've handed it over to the military system, they're not gonna be handled in the nicest way. So we've been finding with, with liquids that the containers are bursting and uh, they're damaging other people's care packages getting over. Uh, so please, um, when, we, when you get the list of what can and can't go, do it here to that. And that's all I have now. And you're up next anyway. I would just ask for the people that are joining us online that we will answer your questions at the end when we go to the open forum question. We are, however, going to continue through these topics. So please, uh, we'll capture your questions and then we'll have an opportunity to answer those again at the, end, at the very end. we can't really do a whole lot without money, right? Even some of just the little recognition things, like getting someone a farewell gift. We need money for that most of the time. So there can be any number of fundraisers that we do. I know in my units we've done a bottle drive and we raised quite a bit of money because it was in the middle of COVID when everyone had been home and had a lot of bottles. So that was successful. Other units do the same thing. I mean, I know right now I probably have a crazy wealth of Dr. Pepper cans sitting in my garage. So there's that. Um, but there's so many things you do, and you can fundraise to the community. You cannot ask the community to donate, but you can fundraise to your community. So that's a big option. I know for a while there was a question about whether or not we could do that. You can. Um, we are going to try to do some, not necessarily statewide fundraisers in a broad term, but we're gonna to try to coordinate the units in their efforts to all do something all at once as a state. That way it's fair to the units who take part in that and they get those funds instead of doing a general state fundraiser and having to split it evenly amongst everyone. Because we wanna make sure that everyone gets 
their money's worth and gets what they put into it back out of it. Um, but yeah, so that's really all I have. If anyone has any great fundraiser suggestions, we would absolutely love to hear them. Question. Yes. Is there a possibility that the uh, guard could move forward with an RV park and that fundraising uh, payment scores an RV park here to go to the uh, unit such as yours? I will have to get back to you on that one, sir. I do not have the answer at this time, but I will look into that. I'd be willing to work with you on it. Absolutely. We'll talk. Okay, so yellow ribbons is uh, a great topic, actually, because I've been in several meetings over the last month about this. We have begun planning the mid-cycle yellow ribbon, and we will be planning the end of deployment yellow ribbons as well. Um, so what I want to ask for the yellow ribbons really is check your mail, keep an eye out. You will be getting a mailing from family programs. In that mailing, there's going to be a survey invitation. Take the survey. That's how we'll know if you're coming, if you're not coming. It will tell us all the numbers that we need. And it gives you a chance to tell us what you want to do that day and what you need to feel supported on that day. That's your option. And you know, that's the best way for us to know what we can do to show you that we appreciate you. So just please check your mail, do the survey, and once we get that, we will move forward with the plans and making that day everything that you want it to be, within reason. <laughs> Thank you. We'll now uh, have Mr. Richard come up and uh, give us a military one-on-one brief. Thank you. Thank you, Major Hearn. <clears throat> Major Hearn's asked me here to uh, give a brief uh, class here, we call Military 101 of our family programs. Uh, this could very easily go for two to three hours, but I'm gonna try to compress it into about 10 minutes. <clears throat> My name's Andrew Richard. I work over at the Family Programs Office uh, with several of the other folks here. Uh, I've been here for about uh, almost a year now, uh, but I've also been working uh, as a military reservist for about 13 years now. Uh, eight of which were, were active duty. Uh, so this stuff is uh, very familiar uh, and near and dear to my heart. I also recommend, uh, reiterate that for the folks out on Facebook, uh, please do type uh, questions as they come up in the chat box. Uh, and again, we'll address those as they come up. Uh, so the slide, please. Okay, so the, uh, the slide here, probably difficult to see in Facebook, but <clears throat> this is our agenda slide. Basically, this period of instruction is going to cover very broad base, what the military is, generally how it works, and really what it means to hear some of the things that service members say on a routine basis. Uh, slide please. So what is the military? We have several different uh, services that specialize in different types of warfare. Air Force is pretty good at fighting wars in the air, maybe on the sea, etc. Um, so each has its own function. We, everybody always knows Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, uh, sometimes Coast Guard, they count as well. Uh, and now we also have the Space Force, which is kind of a new thing for everybody. I met my first Space Force Guardian uh, last week, actually. And yes, they are called, called Guardians. It's weird. Uh, each of those services also has, uh, with the exception of Space Force, has a reserve component. So much like the National Guard, these are drilling reservists, one weekend a month, two weeks a year. On average, that's the recruiter's pitch. Uh, so on average, one weekend, month, two weeks a year. Um, Coast Guard has their own reserve component. Marine Corps has reserve component. So. Next, please. Okay. Now, each service specializes in their own type of warfare, but we all operate roughly the same way, with a hierarchical structure uh, based on effective command and control. So generally speaking, we all have very distinct uniforms. We have very specific things we wear on those uniforms to tell each other um, what level of responsibility we uh, typically uh, typically do. Uh, and we'll kind of go through some of those uh, in the next few slides. So on this slide, these are our junior enlisted uh, uh, rank insignias here. We have uh, from top to bottom our uh, increasing in responsibility, increasing in rank, also in increasing in pay. 
Uh, and then the columns here are each of the different services, uh, Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. Uh, so again, these are some of our junior enlisted, our privates, uh, petty officer, or, or seamen, excuse me, uh, seamen, airmen, and privates. Uh, next, please. Our next slide is our non-commissioned officer ranks. So these are our sergeants, our petty officers, um, all the way up to uh, Gunnery Sergeant Marine Corps, Sergeant First Class, uh, the Army, Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. These are folks who have been in for several years, uh, have much higher responsibilities than, uh, uh, than their junior enlisted counterparts on the previous slide. If we go to the next slide, these are our senior enlisted. Uh, these folks have been in for 15 to 20 years, typically at least. Um, they also are generally principal advisors to commanding officers. Next, please. We also have these weird guys called warrant officers. They're generally specialists uh, in whatever field they they uh, serve in. Uh, also here in Vermont, they're, they're typically pilots as well as uh, one we see commonly. Next we have our commissioned officers. So these are uh, lieutenants, captains, majors, lieutenant colonels in the ground services. In, the, uh, uh, in our maritime services, we have ensigns, lieutenants, uh, commanders, and captains. These are typically commanders of some sort. They're all leadership positions, unlike the warrant officers who may or may not be uh, in a leadership role. Next, please. I'll keep going anyway. Uh, and then we have our flag officers. So these are generals and admirals, and generally people are pretty familiar with what these folks do. They're, they're really important people, and we salute them like crazy when they walk up. Okay, so a little bit more technical, we have our structure. So whatever service you're in, uh, there are units of organization that denote a specific type of responsibility for the people who command, and also uh, roughly how many people uh, are in that organization. So here in the Army National Guard, uh, there are a lot of, a lot of terms that we might hear on a routine basis. A squad, typically anywhere between nine and 15 soldiers at a time. Um, Three to five squads makes a platoon. Three to five platoons makes a company. Uh, on top of a company's battalion, and then either brigade or regiment, depending on function, division, corps, and even above a corps, three to five corps make an army. Yes, there couldn't be more than one army in the army, which is a weird concept, but that's uh, the level of organization, just the, the title we've given uh, to those levels. Next, please. Now, uniforms, each service has their own specific uniforms. Uh, they're unique. Uh, they have distinct features and functions and traditions. Um, here in the Army, we see a lot of uh, PT uniforms around base. Uh, we have the duty uniforms, or ACUs. Uh, in the Marine Corps, we call them camis. Uh, it's kind of common. Uh, and then the dress uniform as well, and that's where we get all of our uh, beautiful decorations and the things that really tell a story about what a soldier has done in his career. Thanks, please. Okay, acronyms. Now, I can't educate everybody on all of the acronyms that the military uses. That would take years, uh, at least. Uh, but what I can say is that service members use acronyms without even knowing it. And a lot of times we don't even know what they mean. Uh, we kind of have an idea of what they are functionally, but we may not necessarily know what each letter means or how it came to be known like that. So my message to Facebook world here is please ask. Uh, if you're confused on something, it is, it is totally expected that we're gonna say stuff that some people just have no idea what we're talking about because we marginally understand it too. Uh, so please do ask. Okay, now I mentioned before that we have active component and reserve component, which the National Guard is a type of reserve component. Uh, this slide here talks about the types of orders uh, that service members will serve. Um, there are several, uh, and they pertain to the type of uh, the United States Code, the law uh, for which we're performing a particular function. Uh, what that means to us really is, layman, there are, there are a couple different ways that service members can serve. Most of the Vermont National Guard are what we call M-Day soldiers, or traditional drilling soldiers, one week in a month, two weeks in a month. Uh, within the National Guard, being a reserve component, there are people who work full-time to support all of those part-timers. 
Uh, we call those folks AGR, or Active Guard Reserve. Uh, and as an example of a, uh, an acronym that nobody knows, I don't know what MDA stands for. Uh, I'm sure somebody does. Mande. Uh, so AGR, full-time folks uh, who are serving on a permanent, uh, semi-permanent at least, uh, uh, service uh, term to support the uh, drilling reservists. ADOS orders, or active duty operational support, those are typically short-term, full-time orders, uh, which MDA soldiers can uh, uh, serve under different circumstances. I think our, uh, our trip down to DC was, was ADOS. Uh, Etc. Generally, when you're activated or mobilized, that becomes some sort of chaos. Next, please. So that leads me into uh, the definition of veteran. Now, this is kind of important for all of us here, and it's not straightforward. Lots of people think, well, okay, somebody was in the National Guard or somebody served, they must be a veteran. That's not always the case, and uh, as much as we sometimes wish it were, uh, there's a very specific uh, definition for the term veteran, and that relates directly to the types of benefits that your uh, your service member can qualify for uh, with the Veterans Administration or the VA. So, uh, what I would recommend for this is uh, please talk to your uh, your unit or your military family readiness specialist about uh, any questions you might have regarding this. Uh, generally speaking, if somebody has uh, served a long time, deployed, mobilized to do something special other than the ordinary one weekend a month, two weeks a year. That person's probably a veteran, uh, but not necessarily so. Uh, so again, please ask if you have any questions. Uh, we have some folks on staff, the Veterans Outreach Team also is available uh, to discuss this in, in, in amazing detail uh, with all of you about what that means and the implications for benefits down the line. Uh, Okay, brief history of the National Guard. So, National Guard exists today. Every state has one. There are 54 in total, including some of the territories. Um, traces its roots all the way back to the Minutemen of the Revolutionary War, where they grab their, their muskets and with a minute's notice go fight the British uh, whenever, whenever called upon. Eventually, that paradigm turned into a militia, which morphed again into uh, the modern National Guard system uh, under the direction of governors. Uh, and there's, we could take college classes on this one, but that's about all I'm going to say about that one uh, for tonight's purposes. Next, please. Now, specifically with the Vermont National Guard, uh, there are kind of five main organizations within the Vermont National Guard. There's the Joint Force Headquarters, which oversees both the Air National Guard and the Army National Guard uh, uh, functions. Uh, under the air side, we have the 158th Fighter Wing, uh, our pilots and uh, supporting cadre who fly the F-35s. Under the Army side, uh, the largest largest uh, sub-element there is the 86th Infantry Brigade Combat Team, IBCT, sometimes just known as BCT or the Brigade. You might see that as BDE, very confusing sometimes. But large organization, several thousand soldiers, uh, and many of whom are deployed currently. Uh, so probably many of your family members tonight. Uh, as a sister element to the Brigade Combat Team is the uh, 124th Infantry Regiment, which is also colloquially known as, colloquially known as RTI, or uh, Regional Training Institute. These folks are responsible for all of the training of our Guardsmen here uh, and making sure that they're uh, knowledgeable and capable to carry, carry out their duties. Uh, and again, uh, a sister organization to that is the Garrison Support Command, or GSC, which uh, is comprised of several other capabilities, uh, very unique and specialized capabilities that are not resident within uh, the Brigade Combat Team. Next, please. Okay, so slide is for questions. Um, again, please do type all of your questions in the chat box. This was a very, very bare bones uh, rundown of military in general and Vermont National Guard stuff. Uh, also, please join the Kitchen Boots, excuse me, Kitchen Spoons and Combat Boots team, uh, where we have monthly webinars on this and other topics uh, designed to assist and educate family members and service members uh, to better navigate the rigors of military life. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Richard. So now I kind of want to go into an overview of what the rear detachment is and uh, the purpose of having a rear detachment back here in Vermont. So again, Major John Hearn, I am the Administrative Officer for the 86th Infantry Brigade Combat Team. Yes, uh, Mr. Andrew, also known as the IBCT, the BCT, the Brigade, and the BDE. So uh, yes, it has goes by many acronyms. Uh, you'll find that there is acronym soup. Uh, but the rear detachment primarily exists for two reasons. One, I'm in charge of making sure that we meet all the individual and unit training requirements uh, for the soldiers that remain here as part of the rear detachment. So we get soldiers that are coming back from their uh, initial training. We have soldiers that have stayed back for various reasons, and I have to ensure that we're meeting our readiness requirements uh, while the brigade is forward. The second reason why the rear detachment exists is to ensure that we have a, uh, a entity back here in Vermont that's here to take care of the families. So we serve as your military points of contact for your units that are deployed overseas, or for your soldiers that are deployed overseas. So with that said, what we thought would be a good opportunity to do tonight is just talk through a few different scenarios uh, where you would contact um, the three you know, primary entities for uh, family readiness matters. So one, you have your military point of contact. So every unit, all the way down to the company level, has a FRG. And part of that FRG, your family readiness group, is a military point of contact. So the military points of contact will handle questions related to TRICARE, uh, DEERS, so how to enroll your kids into DEERS and so that they become eligible for TRICARE. We'd also handle questions related to, look, I'm really having a hard time um, getting you know, my lawn mowed, I'm having a hard time getting snow removal, so who do I reach out to? Can you help me find somebody that can assist us? The great part about being a National Guard is we have a lot of soldiers that come from various different backgrounds. Unlike our active duty counterpart, we have a lot of soldiers that are multidisciplined uh, in the outside world, in the civilian world, that may know uh, snow removal services, may know lawn care specialists, may be lawn care specialists. So if you have any questions and you find yourself in a tight spot or a situation, you're like, I just need help and I don't know how to reach out or who to reach out to, please just reach out to your military point of contact. The other two groups that are here to support families throughout your deployment are the family or the uh, family readiness groups themselves, which we now refer to as the SFRGs or Soldier Family Readiness Groups. And then we also have the Family Readiness Team, uh, which are full-time support here at Camp Johnson and on the outside units as well. So I'll call up first um, Jesse Smith again to just talk through some of the scenarios that the SFRG can assist with. Jesse. So in my role as an SFRG leader, I handle many, many things. One of them basically just being a link to resources, which I definitely want to highlight for all three of us that you can contact your MPOP, you can contact your SFRG, you can contact your MIFRS, which is the Andrew Richards and his team. We will be able to tell you who the right person to contact is. We will be able to help you through that process. Um, for me as an SFRG, a lot of what I do is just support, emotional support, making sure you're getting in touch with the resources, you know, just making sure that you're not losing your sanity is really like the biggest duty that I feel like I have as an SFRG. Um, but make sure that you're informed. I know that I try to put things out constantly about what the soldiers are doing out there, you know, within, you know, operational security rules. but. I'm really the person that you can call when you don't know who else to call, or when you, you know, have a question about anything. I'm your person. My theory on all of this is that in the Army, we're a family, and I will consistently treat you like your family. So that is my role. So if Andrew wants to come back up and explain the Mifford's role, that would be fantastic. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, I have a team of uh, five, six including myself, who uh, were dispersed throughout the state. We work full-time in the armories uh, locally to the communities in which we serve. And our full-time job is to help people out, uh, connect to resources, uh, try to solve problems. I describe, it, describe us as problem solvers. Uh, so if there's any trouble that a service member or his family, his or her family encounters, uh, we're here as a support network. Um, we have uh, routine contact with the family readiness group uh, groups 
We have routine contact with uh, the green suitors here, the, the rear detachment folks. We also have uh, a community of, of uh, support here with um, uh, Military One Source. Behind the camera here is Marcy, our, our uh, state representative here from them. Uh, and all sorts of people local here to Vermont um, that they just want to help out service members and their families. And a lot of times they don't even, they don't, don't really know how to do that aside from contacting somebody saying, hey, you'd like that. Uh, and so they get put on a list, and uh, we, we call them up sometimes when uh, when somebody needs help in that particular way that they're capable. Uh, we have access to financial resources. Uh, specifically, we have a financial counselor uh, on staff to be able to help out uh, any service member looking for uh, advice on how to how to manage their own finance, finances. We also have a mental health counselor on staff uh, for similar services there for mental health for, for family members and service members. So again, all three of us, we, we talk all the time routinely. Uh, feel free to contact any one of us for any kind of issue, and we're probably going to work together to find a solution uh, that works for you. Thank you, Mr. Richard. And then we get a lot of questions regarding discounts and where are you eligible to receive military discounts. So I'll have uh, Justice Smith come up here again. Uh, but the bottom line is you can find a lot of the discounts national, like through Big Change, through MilitaryOneSource.com. Uh, but we also have a list that will be provided through the SFRG channels, probably in one of your future newsletters or in an email, that will contain some of the more Vermont-specific discounts. Uh, but I know that's a, a big, hot question, so Jesse Smith. Man, I'm on a roll tonight. Um, so recently, we've been working with Military One Source. They have so much information, and Marcy Caulfield is here. She's fantastic. I adore her. And um, if you have any questions or you need any help with Military One, she is available to you to help you with any of that. But one of the things that Military One Source provides, amongst so much other information, is information on military discounts. All right. And the last topic that we'll cover before we go to the open forum is the Red Cross message process. This is probably one of the more important topics uh, because this is how we communicate to get your soldier home in the event of emergency. So with that said, I'll hand it over to Chief Passimony and we'll go through the Red Cross process. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Miss Passimony. I'm one of those weird warrant officers. That <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a professional. Yeah. So I am the HR technical warrant at the brigade, and I'm here to talk about Red Cross. So the Red Cross is available 24-7, 365, and is your way to get in contact with the service member. So they are available for training exercises and deployments. The best part about uh, wanting to send a Red Cross message is that you can do this online. There's just a little template that you fill out, you can submit it, and it's easy. The other item is that there is an app for that. So <laughs> you can download a Red Cross app onto your phone and submit a Red Cross message via the app and also receive updates um, as it's going through the system. And if you don't have access to the internet or you're not able to download an app, you can always call the 1-800 number, which will be answered 24-7. So I've included this handout, which will be um, distributed. If you don't receive it, please let me know. I can uh, forward it on. And I do have some handouts available here tonight. So basically what you're going to do is fill out your name, your service member's name, uh, what your relationship is, which state that uh, for the National Guard you belong to, and then the unit assignment, uh, if they are training, the armory location, and where they are currently um, on that day of the message. So uh, right now, different uh, units are in transition, so it changes day to day, uh, but don't worry, uh, the units are always updating the Red Cross on their location. So that message is going to connect. Um, and then when you do send that Red Cross message, just know that it's a, it's a message. It's not a guarantee that your service member is going to be released for a leave 
or that if it is an emergency that they're going to be able to make it home in time for that event. It's uh, the Red Cross sends that message out um, so the state of Vermont will receive it, will forward it to the unit, and then that unit will be responsible for getting it all the way down the chain to the service member. Once the service member has received the message, then the unit confirms that and it goes all the way back to the Red Cross so that they can close the loop and say, yes, service member received this message. Um, and then the next step is what is the distance? Uh, is the command releasing them or is it just a message announcement or is it the birth of a child? So maybe that might be further on action. It just depends, every message is unique. But again, this is for emergency notification, not just like grandpa's birthday is tomorrow, you wanna wish him a happy birthday? That's not what the Red Cross is for. It's for an emergency notification. Because again, we do have to close the loop with the Red Cross to make sure that's received. Um, and then if there are any questions on sending a Red Cross message, I will be happy to answer that at the end. Um, and then I think that's pretty much it. The rest is all handled by HR professionals on the back end. But, but please know we take uh, Red Cross messages very seriously. Everything stops, pauses. We do everything we can to get that message out to the service member as soon as possible and close the loop. Uh, we don't just let the Red Cross message sit in our inbox and say, oh, whatever, I'll check it later. No, Red Cross message means, okay, everybody stop what they're doing. Let's make sure this uh, gets answered. So that's all I have. All right, and if you uh, didn't have a chance to see uh, anything very well tonight, we are going to be sending information out, uh, including tonight's brief. It will be recorded, so you can view the link again, but we'll also have any of the information that was provided here tonight uh, to be sent out through the FRG channels to make sure that you receive a copy of the Red Cross process, our military, uh, and SFRG, and different points of contact. So we'll make sure that we provide all that information to you uh, through those channels. So if you, if you thought you missed it, don't worry. We'll make sure that we, uh, we send it out again. So now we'll transition over to the open forum and uh, we'll start to go through the questions that we're receiving uh, in the chat window. All right, uh, there were a couple questions about Yellow Ribbon that have since disappeared, so I urge whoever asked those questions, if they're still lingering, to re-enter them so I can make sure to articulate them correctly. But what we do have in here is, first request for Marcy, can you send out a direct link to the discounts, talking about the military discounts, on the mill source page, uh, easy access for those of us short on time. Marcy, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, yeah, the mic's right here. Okay. So there are actually technically three different locations of what we can do at, uh, at the family programs level is pull together a full complete listing from those three areas and send them out through the SFRG leaders and any email uh, emails that we may have. So definitely see that coming soon. Great, thank you, Marcy. And I think we have our, one of our yellow ribbon questions back again. What does yellow, it's a three part question. Uh, what does yellow ribbon mean for units returning from deployment? Is yellow ribbon return geared more towards family or soldiers? Are the events staggered uh, for each unit based on their return date? And are all families and soldiers expected or required to attend? That's a great question. That's a great series of questions. You may have to remind me of those as I go. Um, first, the only families of soldiers and soldiers who are required to attend are the soldiers deployed. And they're, and they're not required to attend, but they are able to attend, especially the mid-cycle. Um, the yellow ribbon at the end it is more required because that's a closeout to make sure everybody's okay, make sure they're not having any big issues after they get back. So the final closeout yellow ribbon, let's go ahead and just put the required stamp on that one. Uh, Mid-cycle is more of a check for, to see how the families are doing, just to let the families know that we're thinking of them. That's not required, that is entirely um, voluntary. Um, we will be having two different um, mid-cycle events, so we will be staggering that a little bit, and then we will have multiple different final events at the end as the units come back 
because we want to make sure that we're getting them within the appropriate window. Um, I know I missed a piece of that question. What is the yellow ribbon, right? What does the yellow ribbon mean for units returning from deployment? Did we tackle oh, that? Uh, the yellow ribbon, when you return from a deployment, basically it just it's a way to, for everybody to get some briefings, just to make sure that everybody's doing okay mentally, financially, physically, all that. Like it's just a big overall check to make sure that everyone is being taken care of, that nothing falls through the cracks. If everyone got home and you know the first couple weeks at home were really rough and they're having trouble adjusting, some of that will be covered in topics during the yellow ribbon. So it's just a really good way to you know close up you know the mobilization experience and really you know tie up any loose ends. Uh, follow up to that, who's coordinating the Yellow Ribbon events? Jesse, are you taking lead or will the SFRG leaders be helping out? Um, we are always open to the SFRG leaders giving their opinions and letting us know what they would like to see and we are sending out the survey so that the family members themselves um, can have an input. So as for who's planning, we have meetings once a week at family programs, myself, um, Captain Dan Davis, Miriam, Dave, Candace, there's a whole slew of us in those meetings, and we try to make sure that we cover every angle from childcare during the Yellow Ribbon to youth activities, to activities you know, for the family members themselves, to food, lodging if appropriate, etc. cetera. Uh, there are, I wanted to let everyone know who didn't ask Yellow Ribbon questions. I haven't forgotten you. I just, before Jess sits down and has to get back up again, I want to keep going. Uh, what qualifies as a family, uh, or as family, parents, spouse, children, how many people are expected to attend? Is it like a return ceremony? The Yellow Ribbon is not like a return ceremony. Um, it's really for the soldier and their immediate family. And it's usually two people. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, all right. We're getting a slew of follow-ups, um, so let's knock out a few of these. Um, I don't want to forget about some of the other ones we have, but uh, I'm new to all this, but when the soldiers come home, do you contact the families to be there to pick them up? That I do not have a good answer for. What I can assure you is that you will be, there will be communication. Your soldiers will not be sitting at an airport waiting with nobody. There will always the communication in that regard, you don't have to worry about that. So I think I can, I yes. can try to answer that a little bit from the unit's perspective. So most of the units will be arriving back to Vermont via contract air, and that's something that we'll definitely advertise through our public affairs. So the families are more than aware. We'll, we'll push that out on our Facebook um, as far as, or uh, through our, our official channels to make sure that the families are aware when that contracted air will arrive back in Vermont so that you can be there and welcome your soldiers home. Uh, there will be a few soldiers that will show up independently uh, via commercial air, and that's something that we will communicate directly uh, with SFRG members and with the families specifically so that there's somebody uh, available at the airport, uh, including a unit member, to uh, receive that soldier when they arrive. Uh, is Yellow Ribbon a new brand for redeployment cycle? No. no. It's been around for years. Yeah, Yellow Ribbon is not new. Um, Yellow Ribbon is just the name of the program where there's one at the beginning to make sure that families and soldiers have all the information that they need for during the deployment, in the middle for the check, and at the end for the closeout. It's really just to make sure that everyone is getting their needs met. Candace, uh, Jesse, if you can let them know they actually have information, they can go and check out the website, the Family Programs website, and there's a whole Yellow Ribbon section that they can. They can hear you. I oh, great, you guys can research on the Family Programs website. Plus, Sorry. there were Yellow Ribbon binders that were given out at the units um, before mobilization happened. So if you happen to have a big binder that says Yellow Ribbon on it somewhere, there is loads of information in that thing. Um, last question, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit because it's specific as a parent, but um, well, no, anyway. as a parent of a deployed soldier, I assume they get they can get this info through similar channels that you mentioned. Okay. As a parent of a deployed soldier, what's the... Advantage? So for instance, the soldier's not married, so their spouse wouldn't get it. Right. But another interested party such as a parent. Yes, so, there is... 
So when they go through SRP, mostly, but not always, um, they need to give a point of contact to the family programs, individuals who are there, and their MIFRs also take that information, or if they didn't do it then, their SFRGs can do that as well. But everyone is, can give a point of contact. That can be brother, sister, spouse, girlfriend, mother, father. So if you're down as a point of contact, or even just if you're, we have Facebook groups, a lot of units do close Facebook groups, and most of us, will allow, it doesn't matter if you're a spouse, if you are a close family member or a close support system for that soldier, we will let you in the group and you will see what they're up to. You'll see the information. We do put it out there. We want to make sure that everyone who could support our soldiers at all knows the information. Awesome. I, th I think we're good for now for the yellow ribbon questions, or maybe they're all headed to the web page. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, new question. We need more help with daycare for members' children. What can we do to help in this area of child care? Uh, another person, or it may be the same person, echo that they see a need for child care help. We actually have a focus group going on right now um, to discuss daycare in the Vermont National Guard. It has been a huge issue. I have five daughters myself and two stepkids, so I definitely feel you on the daycare thing. Um, it is a problem and we have a lot of potential options. Right now we're really trying to feel things out and see what we can do. I know that for some areas it's the lack of actual daycare centers. For some families it's financial. There is resources that you can use through Military One Source to get financial aid for daycare. If you're having any issues like that, reach out to your MIFR, your SFRG. They can put you in contact with the appropriate people or send you the appropriate links so that you can access that information. Um, somebody asked, where can a list be found of prohibited and acceptable items for care packages? Jill and Eamon already posted a link to the UPS international shipping restrictions, but I do recall avoid liquids because when they break, they affect other packages yes, too. Yes, avoid liquids. And I believe in some areas you can't send pork products. Right. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for that question. Um, the response to that is contact your FRG, your military point of contacts at the unit levels. Those, uh, we of course from the top down, will distribute those lists, but for the most immediate access to that, get hold of your unit. Back to parents, other than daycare, uh, are, are there, is there any other support for new moms who... Yeah. We actually have quite a few initiatives going right now, thanks to Jillian. Um, right now, she monthly goes and picks up an insane amount of diapers, wipes, um, baby formula, you name it. And those are available for our new mothers, new fathers, parents of tiny humans. And we actually currently have the cribs as well, a, a smallish number of cribs, but we do have cribs that are available for families who need that. So we do have things that we can do for new parents, and we also provide meals. We do meal trains for new mothers, because who wants to cook at that point, right? People don't even want to shower at that point. So just reach out to your SFRG. We all work together. Just because we might be the SFRG for one unit, we all talk and we make, hey, I've got a family that lives 70 miles from me. Does anyone live near them? Yep, I live near them. I can bring them dinner. We make sure that people are supported, even if it's not necessarily close to us. So yes, absolutely get in touch with your SFRG, see what we can do for you. One, one thing I'd like to add on that is we talked a little bit about care packages at the beginning of this evening's uh, topic list. And we understand that, you know, today's deployments aren't like the deployments of 2008, 2009, where soldiers really went without, um, really without much. And so they were really in, in dire need of, of support and care packages, et cetera. We're finding that now, uh, these days, soldiers have pretty much access to anything they need or, or want. Um, and it's the families that are really struggling at times. And sometimes that's new parents at home. They need diapers, wipes. Uh, etc. Now we can't openly solicit uh, care package items from the public. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. But when asked, what we'd like to do is develop a list of care package items for our families back here at home. And so if you have ideas of items that you'd like included on that list that we can provide to people that ask, 
Um, we gladly take those. Uh, you can email myself or, uh, or Jessica Smith and uh, we'll compile a list of the most frequently um, requested items and uh, we'll provide that to any organizations or individuals that are looking to donate items to families here in Vermont. So, thank you. I uh, just want to let people online know, I know we're kind of winding down time-wise and we're getting to the last couple questions, so if anyone has anything burning, please don't leave it on the keyboard, send it our way. Um, and even if we can't get to it live, we have it recorded so that we'll be able to get it later. Um, yes, we have a live one. You keep talking about this Military One source? Yep. Is it a website? It is a website. Oh, okay. Yes. Do you just put in militaryone.com? Militaryone.com. May I? Okay, you so know, yes. Military One Source is a free component thing. It's not just a website. You're, you have a state consultant. There's one of me in every state. You have an 800 number that's monitored 24-7. And then you have the website, www.militaryonesource.mil. And so usually family members, service members, if they need the support because they know my face, they'll call me up, they'll seek me out because I sit here at Camp Johnson, but I travel the state, and they'll say, oh, I have a child care situation, I can't find one or I can't pay for it, or there's a financial situation or a housing situation. And so we kind of start at like at my level and I work with the community partners here, but a lot of times people want independent services and support and that's what the website's really good for us because like they said earlier, discounts are there. And I said it was three different areas. Well, there's discounts on shopping, discounts on restaurants, and discounts on if you're planning a trip, staycation, or vacation. So there's a lot of information in this website that is free for the military community to use. It's like a military Google. It really is. Like if, if, we're, if we're breaking it down, it's like a military Google. But the 24-7 phone number, people can call and ask a live person anything, including on Thanksgiving, the highest number calls is how to cook a turkey. <laughs> so it's just kind of like that one-stop nationwide service that's in support of the military. Good answer, Marcy. Thank you, Marcy. Alright, we got the camera all the way around here again. There we go. Alright, we had a question. Uh, a request for Andrew, can you put the contact list, the state map, with the MFRS and or SFRG leaders for all those watching. A lot of these answers can be someone asked a new question and it scrolled away. Um, yeah, can you add, yep. send out those resources? Yep, that link actually is just posted in the in the chat. Uh, it's the Military and Family Readiness uh, Specialist page on the website. Uh, please contact any one of those members listed. How is that for service? Um, <laughs> What? Oh, uh, there was one earlier. I'm dropping my kid off at conservation camp, camp and they want to know pick up and drop off information. Is it there? Yeah, that would just be <laughs> oh. Do you know the answer? No. Okay. No. We had a conversation earlier this morning, so it's come up. Oh. Um, I, I don't know that we have an answer for that we, one. Brian is not here, so we don't have those specifics at the moment. <laughs> If you go to the Family Programs website and go to the Child and Youth section, then you can find the contact information for Brian Stout now, or you can probably ask him directly. His, his voicemail is full. Um, you can, uh, his email is not full. Okay, yes, email Brian. <laughs> um, what kind of family care packages are needed? Can you repeat that question one more time? What kind of family care packages are needed? So we're oh. so we are just kind of solicited. Well, can't That's solicit. What we want, to know. We want to know what you need so that we can compile a list of items uh, that we think families could use, and that way, when organizations or individuals that are looking to donate items to deployed soldiers or families, and not specifically to an individual or a specific unit, that way we can present them with that list. So if you have good feedback that you can provide us on items that you think you could use and that would be beneficial, we'll compile that and we will get that list out um, published and then we'll get that to or any organizations or individuals um, that are requesting it. But if you're asking that question because you would like to donate items to military families, right now without having the population's feedback, I would say simple things like kids' toys, bubbles, puzzles, 
books, um, spa stuff for mom or dad, tools, I don't know. Snacks, yeah, snacks are fantastic. So those are my answers. Good answers, Jess. Thank you, thank you. Can you talk about the diaper operation? The diaper operation? Yeah, sure. Jillian, would you like to come up here and talk about the diaper operation? Sure. We had a volunteer, I'm Jalen with Alpha Company, we're way down in the uh, southeast corner. Uh, one of our volunteers noticed as we were traveling around the state and talking with our families that there was a need. Um, no matter how much organization you've got, it's really hard for new parents, mom or dad, being at home to not only shower, cook a meal, but have to go out and get the diapers or realize that you are out of wipes um, and what do you do other than hose your kid off. Uh, so one of our volunteers reached out to her community and asked for any resources. Um, diapers, formula, uh, hand-me-down baby clothes, anything that can be rehomed for military families and through all the different programs that we've connected with, um, there is a program who connected us directly to the Vermont Diaper Bank, and they have put us on the list. So we actually, for our unit, um, for all of our new young families, uh, we've put in an order for our diapers, uh, specific sizes, um, newborn through uh, 6 T pull-ups, and they supply us with wipes also. Um, we've been able to go pick up and then distribute on a monthly basis. And part of what we do, it's never asking for a handout. Military families are not unlike anyone else, but we are very special. Um, never asking for a handout, but sometimes a helping hand uh, can make all the difference. And so if it's one month, two, three months in a row, at least through deployment, um, getting those extra resources. Um, we have found that it gives us a chance to not only be more involved with the families, but to keep our finger on the pulse. Um, it's not just the newborns. Um, two, three, four years old, we are able to connect with the parents one-on-one -on, -one on a pretty regular basis. Next job, Julia. Anyone else in the room? All right, so I think we're pretty much right on time as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we're pretty much right on time as well, so we'll leave it open just for another minute um, for any additional questions that people may have. Again, I want to thank all the families for attending this evening, whether it be in person or online. Uh, we really appreciate uh, all the service uh, that you guys do um, for us here as part of the Vermont National Guard because uh, you guys uh, do just as much service as the soldiers do for it, and, and we greatly appreciate that and value that, and we are here to support you. So if you have any questions uh, that you think of later, please reach out uh, to any number of people, myself, Jesse Smith, your military point of contact, your SFRG leader, or uh, your military family readiness, and we'll be happy to answer any additional questions uh, that you may have. But uh, once again, uh, thank you. I appreciate um, Appreciate all the families joining us tonight. And uh, again, we'll leave it open for about 30 more seconds now for any additional questions. I don't have an additional question, but I do have an alibi. Yep. I'll run up. All right, one last <laughs> alibi Here we go. from Candace Pro. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, anything to get me in front of the camera. Um, so um, I actually did want to remind individuals that if you don't know anything about Operation Homefront, that is another website that you can go and check out. And actually, Operation Homefront will be starting their Back to School Brigade, uh, actually starting right after the 4th of, 4th of July and going through August. Little, I'll give a very quick review of what that is. Basically, what uh, happens is that Operation Homefront works with Dollar Tree stores all across the state and um, basically uh, patrons of those stores will purchase school supplies um, and then those school supplies will be picked up by volunteers um, and then uh, 
picked up from a Dollar Tree store and distributed to the closest armory to that Dollar Tree store. We are still looking for volunteers. If you were a volunteer last year, please contact me. Uh, let me know that you're interested in volunteering again. If you, you know, just wanna get out and pick up some school supplies um, and you know, drop them off at your local armory, um, you absolutely can do that. And then those school supplies will be available not only to the youth uh, of our military families, but also if you happen to be a service member um, or a veteran that has access to the armory, um, and you are going back to college or you need school supplies, um, you will be eligible for those items as well. So give me a shout if you are interested in volunteering to help support Back to School Brigade. Thank you. Great, thank you, Candace. And then uh, Colonel Hopkins, if you're still on the line, there's a lot of FRGs that are wondering if they can still collect the hugs from you that you promised yes, um, at one of our early FRG meetings. So if you happen to still be awake at two o'clock in the morning your time, just let me know if that's still a go. I can confirm as of two minutes ago, unless there's some other Bray Hopkins out there. <laughs> awesome. I'm sure it'll be reflected in my evaluation. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you to the families. Thank you to the FRGs and military family readiness. I appreciate your support. Again, reach out if you need anything. We're here to support you. Have a good evening.